Hi. Okay, so, um, <laughs> last month, wanting to do the, uh, silent film shorts didn't really work, did it? <laughs> I feel bad about that. But, um, I did come across some information. Some of you may already know. <laughs> A while back, I um, critiqued The Bat and The Bat Whispers, which is inspiration for one of the most iconic comic book characters, Batman. Um, I came across an actor who happens to be the um, inspiration for the Joker. So, we're going to talk about him. Because I haven't really been able, I haven't had a chance to actually sit down and watch the film that inspired um, the Joker persona. So, or the whole, I think you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's only two in the morning, but <laughs> anyway, um, this actor's name, and I'm sorry for that, it's really warm even at this early in the morning. So his full name is actually Hans Walter Conrad Viet, and I hope I'm saying that right. But it was his professional name turned into just Conrad Veet. Um, he was born in 1893. He's from Berlin, Germany. And um, he was he was part of the German army in World War One. And, uh, he became very sick. And while he was recuperating, that's when he... I guess he received a letter about a particular individual, I guess like a lover or somebody, and... She had ended up in a theater, and then he decided to apply at that same theater. Although he had not fully recovered. From his sickness, I mean, he had like jaundice and pneumonia and I guess something else. But I think it was just those two things. And... Um, the army, <laughs> even though he was very sick, the army let him be part of the theater and entertain, entertain the troops. <sighs> Apparently he liked performing more than this girl, so he ended his relationship and then in 19... 16, he was re-examined, and he could no longer fight in the army. He was given a discharge in 1917, and he returned to Berlin to pursue an acting career. So... From 1916 until his death, he was in more than a hundred films, and that's like an understatement, because I looked at his filmography, there's tons of films. <laughs> My goodness. So he is a stage performer as well as film. One of his earliest performances was the murderous Cesar in, and I think I say that right, in The Cabinet of Dr. Calgary, which was in 1920. 
So he did quite a few films in Germany. Um, when you look that up. And then his starring role, the, the iconic role that he did is The Man Who Laughs, which is in 1928, and that's the film that was the inspiration. I mean, his look and everything was the inspiration for the Joker. So, um... He, in that film, he is a disfigured circus performer, and his face is cut up into a permanent grin, a permanent smile. I did look up <laughs> what it's about, and basically that's what it is, so it, it makes sense. I mean, you know, the idea of the Joker has changed over the years, it's kind of like the when uh, we were talking about Robin Hood and how the original Douglas Fairbanks idea has changed over the years, but the nugget of, you know, it, it's still inspired by the Douglas Fairbanks original inspiration. So the nugget is there. Much like... Um, Conrad's Man Who Laughs. However, we don't really see him as a circus performer anymore. <laughs> Just, not really. Not much. But anyway, so... 20 years later, the Joker comes up. <laughs> He did quite a few other horror films, even before this one. Um, films like uh, The Hands of Warlock, Student of Prague, Waxworks, I, and, and in Waxworks he played Ivan the Terrible. And, um... And then in the late 1920s, this this particular thing that I'm reading kind of jumps back and forth. So. so in the late 1920s, he moved to Hollywood and made a few films. And then that's about the time when talking pictures started cropping up. And his difficulty with speaking English kind of messed up his career here in America. Kind of what happened with Bela Lugosi. I mean, Hollywood was telling him that his accent, his Hungarian accent, was going to mess him up. You know, nowadays we don't really think about that. We think, oh, the accent is really cool, but back then they're saying, you know, because talkies were new. And so... You know, Hollywood was flaring that up right and left. They're saying, if you don't talk normal, you know, really, what is normal? But it, it was a thing of the times, you know? It, because talkies were so new, and you had to speak a certain way. And that and that was one of the things that you see in Singing in the Rain, when they're having actual speech professors and everything. And when they say, when you're translating into, you know, when you're transferring over from silent to talkies, a lot of people did not transfer over because if you had that nasally weird voice, Fran Drescher wouldn't have made it. <laughs> Just gonna say. So he didn't really do very well because he didn't speak English very well. So he ended up returning to Germany to make more films. Um, he started tutoring to other performers. And uh, let's see. He opposed the Nazi regime and donated to Britain 
to assist in the war effort. So basically, during this time, you know, as the as World War Two started to crop up, his career was kind of on hold. So this is what that's what that's talking about. And he did <laughs> he did move around a lot during that time and he arrived in Britain, he perfected his English and pretty soon he came in in the forties he came back to the US. Um, he was still helping in the British effort with the war and everything, and um, because remember the U.S. didn't join the war right away, <laughs> but anyway, he was still helping with the British effort and at the same time trying to make films. And uh, that would actually help in the war effort at that time. That would go against the Nazis. So he was trying to push the idea of fight against Nazis and everything. And everything like that. And um, so it says here... Conrad gave his life savings to the British government to help finance the war effort. Realizing that Hollywood would most likely typecast him in Nazi roles, he had his contract mandate that they must always be villains. So he was trying to make a point. Um... So he did roles, he was in movies like A Woman's Face, and he also did a uh, Nazi Agent, so A Woman's Face was in 1941, he was also in Nazi Agent, um, one of his best known roles was where he's Major Heinrich Strasser in Casablanca in 1942. He did one more film after that. And then he passed away. Um, that film was basically right before the U.S. entered the war. <laughs> um, But he married like three times, two, three or four times, yeah. And it looks like to all German ladies, no, his last marriage was to a Jewish, a Hungarian Jewish lady. And he died of a massive heart attack. He was 50 years old. So anyway, um, so he's the inspiration for Joker. <laughs> when you look up his filmography, yeah, he was in a lot. Most of them are from Germany. Um, and then once World War II started to break out and he s saw everything that was going on with um, Nazism and everything, he pretty much fled. He was like, I'm not going to be a part of this. But he put every all his effort into helping Britain. So, um, and then when he came into America, like it said, basically, he said, if I'm going to be cast 
make it be a villain. You know, I'm going to make a point. <laughs> um, so he did do, like I, like I said, he was in a film called Nazi Agent. If you've ever heard of that one. But, yeah. And he, he was a World War I veteran. That's basically how he got started acting. He got sick. He never fully recovered, though. So. But anyway. Yeah, so. I will definitely be watching the film. Um, the Man Who Laughs. It's a, a 1928 film. And it's basically about a disfigured circus performer, and his fate is, is cut up. It, it's funny how <laughs> we kind of go off track with that. <laughs> but like I said, you know, Robin Hood, um, Douglas Fairbanks Sr., when he did his silent film, he was going directly on the legend and the book by, I think his name is Howard Pyle. I read the story. And um, it's funny how we kind of fall away from that. And now we have all these different other, you know, like uh, Russell Crowe and, and um, oh, that one from 1991 that we kind of poke fun at. <laughs> I remember when that one came out. There's like so many different TV movies and films and of Robin Hood. It's kind of like... And King Arthur is another one that, you know, people have so many different ideas and concepts now. Joker's another one. But anyway, I wanted to talk about Conrad V. And I'll put his name because I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. And I do apologize if I'm not. But I wanted to talk about him because, you know, I talk, I critiqued The Bat and The Bat Whispers, um, which were inspiration for Batman, so I thought, why not talk about the gentleman who inspired Joker? So, and I will, of course, when I have time, <laughs> whenever that is, um... I will watch The Man Who Laughs and critique it. And again, if there's anything that I say wrong or you want to add to it, anything that I've said, don't hesitate. I, I'm, I love when you guys add on to stuff and put your own knowledge into stuff that I post. 